prior to 9-11, the anti-money laundering regulations were really kind of driven toward preventing banks from processing transactions for drug traffickers and to some extent organized crime. Uh, but it didn't get nearly the attention it got until 9-11 when it was realized that the financing of terrorism was really um, uh, something that the government had to pay attention to. And the question was, well, how, as a government and as an industry, how do we see those kinds of funds going through? And law enforcement can't do it by itself. Uh, it needs help from the industry to not only prevent, but detect and report and help it understand what's going on out there so that it can further investigate. The Patriot Act came into being soon after 9-11, and the regulations uh, implementing the Patriot Act have evolved over the time since it's been um, uh, put into place. And so you have now, again, that banks are regulated, broker-dealers, insurance industries, money service businesses, which means your, your check cashers, your credit card companies, the wire transfer companies, jewelers, because you can transfer uh, jewels and precious metals. It's another form of transferring wealth. I mean, there was a case I recall with the, the government where they um, took gold, melted it into uh, Things like doorknobs, things that nails, things that look like they were uh, common household items and painted them gray and transferred them back to South America in payment for, for drugs because it was you know, an, another way of, of, of getting the proceeds back to where they belong. So, I mean, there's all kinds of way to transfer value for bad things. When you talk about what's happened since 9-11, I think everybody's sort of worried that something will slip through the cracks. No one wants to be the examiner for the bank where the transactions that finance the next 9-11 goes through. It's everybody, there's, that, that's kind of the fear, the, the backdrop. So the concern is, I'm not going to let this institution get away with anything, so therefore I'm going to look at everything. And everything sometimes becomes, it, it reaches diminishing returns. So you end up with... Instead of just having the bank make sure that it's meeting all its regulatory requirements, it's now required to go beyond and beyond and beyond to satisfy its examiners, not necessarily just to, to satisfy law and regulation. What ends up happening is the banks will spend lots and lots and lots of money trying to show progress that they're dealing with these issues, but they're not necessarily dealing with them smartly. So now they've, they've, their resources are, are completely misfocused on trying to put their fingers in the holes in the dike, you know, and, and, and fix the little leaks while something really bad is happening at the top. And no one's really had the bandwidth to step back and and look at the bigger picture and figure out, am I really preventing the terrorist financing from coming through here by looking at all these student loan transactions or credit card transactions or auto finance transactions by putting 50 people on fixing these? Am I really making things better for the future or going forward? And the answer is probably not. It's challenging to be able to take the time to step back, to examine what should this look like? If we just stopped and, and re-examined what would good look like and how would we know that it's good? I don't know that there's enough of that going on because of the pressures that are on uh, the financial institutions from day to day. <laughs>